Hello, everyone. Welcome to If My Heart Wings Flight Diary Fan Disc. So I'm on the title screen, and I'm going to play one more route to close off my seventh set of Let's Play videos. So let's go to the start page. So I've already shown you the after route or the after store. And I've already played through this, and this route was based off the end of Katori's route in the original If I Hire Wings. Oh, so also still presents in between. So I'm going to be doing the this route. So this is basically a diary, or basically we're seeing the common route from Katori's perspective. So basically Katori will be narrating the common route, and we get to see her feelings and how she was feeling during those events. And I won't mention much because we've already seen how the common route goes in the original If Our Heart Wings. So the usual where in the beginning Aoi finds a paper airplane and it traces him to Katori who is stuck in the wheelchair and everything else going up from there. So anyways, let's see how this goes. So this will be the last route that is pertaining to Katori. So back then, I used to spend my days like a frog at the bottom of the well looking up at the skies. And there was a story about that. So the fact that the frog feels that the sky is only as big as the opening of the well, and I don't know which animal was the one that told the frog to come out. Oh, so it was a bird. And it's like, well, why don't you come out and see how big the sky actually is? The floating around blue sky is ever so far and I can't even begin to imagine climbing towards it from the bottom of the well. <sighs> and I felt like Katori was afraid to, okay, I have to move one step up and I'm kind of afraid to see something that is much, much, much bigger than what I'm used to. So going from the sky being the size of the opening of the well to one that's so vast that you can't even imagine how big it is. It is just another day of the same old thing when by chance I encountered a glider. <sighs> I push up a gentle slope, huffing air as I went. And for normal people, it is probably a gentle slope, but to me, just getting to the top on my own is barely manageable. I slowly move forward in my wheelchair while complaining. And a quacking sound broke into my thoughts. So I'm sure most people will think, so why does Katori want to go here, even though it is hard to get up here in a wheelchair? The duck next to me, wagging his tail, quacks as if he is encouraging me. So okay, if you want to go here, then do your best. I'm determined to do it on my own without anyone else's help. <sighs> and Victoria does make it. I finally make it to the top of the hill, drenched in sweat, and the view opens up in front of me.
So looking down at Wilma Hill, the wind turbines, the lake, and the blue sky. The large lake stretched out down below and I could see the streets of Kazagura. Wind turbines are lined up on the slope of the hill and the ever-expanding blue sky stretched out above. There you go, all three correct. The duck wearing a hat quacks back at me and slants his head slightly. And here's the very first image of Aoi seeing Katori. So Katori Habane, it is the kind of name that hints of being able to take to the skies, but not only could I not fly, I can't even run. So I'm sure for Katori, her name means little bird, so as a little bird, she's young, the wings aren't big enough, and she can't be able to fly on her own. <laughs> a breeze blows on the gentle slope of the hill and flutters my hair. It had been a long time since I felt this refreshed. I have been depressed for a long time. Everything else is bringing me down. It really is tough climbing up here, but I feel like it is well worth the effort. I spent some time on top of Wimmo Hill, enjoying the wind and the view. And when I'm done, I try to push my wheelchair to make my way back down the hill. And now this is where Katori realizes that something isn't right. The wheel won't budge, not even a bit. I look down to see if something is stuck and... And that's when Katori realizes that she had a flat. So it was because she was working the wheelchair so hard when she tried to get up the windmill hill. And by doing so, I think she overworked the wheels or the tires and they broke. Or it punctured the tire. So one of the tires is flat and the air is gone. The exhilaration I had felt was suddenly all gone and I went pale instantly. I began to tear up out of fear and anxiety. My vision starts to blur and hat starts to quack again. I'll get help. He must have noticed the state I was in and is trying to calm me down. Don't worry, I can deal with this. I wipe the tears from my face and clean my nose. I don't want to cry. It would just show how powerless I was or am. Don't worry. So someone will find me eventually. I pretend to be cheerful as I talk to Hat and maybe I can cheer myself up. But time continues to pass. And no one is coming. I notice it on the climb up, but there isn't anyone around. The only sign of people are the wind turbines and the solar panels 
and there's no reason for people to come here unless they want to look at the wind turbines or do maintenance. I felt as if I am in a post-apocalyptic world left here all by myself. So after doomsday, lonely, hungry, maybe no one would come after all, I thought. And now, Katori is desperate. So I think she's going to try to force herself down Windmill Hill despite the flat. I try to push the wheelchair one more time. The flat tire is heavy and no matter how much I pushed, I can't move and I hadn't even moved a meter and I'm already out of breath and I'm out of muscle power. I search my pockets but to no avail, I must have left my phone at home. I shouldn't have been feeling a sense of accomplishment from climbing the hill and seeing the wonderful view and yet it is quite depressing placing oh so facing a disaster here of all places it was all so pathetic I'm about to cry again. But instead I tore a piece of paper from my notebook. I wrote a message and fold it. And that's when Gatori sends a paper airplane down the hill. I put my thoughts into it and threw my SOS paper airplane towards the sky. And I know it is stupid, but just maybe someone would pass by at the bottom of the hill. It's better than do nothing and crying. But I didn't expect it to reach anyone. I didn't think anyone would get my SOS and come to get me. And this is where Aoi picks up the paper airplane and looks up and finds Katori and he asks Katori, so do you throw this? <laughs> but somehow it happens that someone got my SOS. A boy about the same age as me climbed up the hill with the paper airplane in his hand. And before I realize, tears are suddenly dripping down my face. And here is where we see Aoi fixing up the flat for Katori's wheelchair. Well, that's not necessarily true. He used a strange looking tool to start fixing the puncture on my wheelchair. It is calming to have him around and before long I stopped crying. So someone did come to help me. A nice breeze blew and fluttered my hair. A lot of wind comes through here and I guess that's why they put the wind turbines here. They are... Oh, so they weren't here five years ago though. Oh, so this is what I was saying to Katori in the beginning. Wait, so five years ago? Oh, I just moved back here. He had just come back to Kazagura and just so happened to come and see the windmills that were not here five years ago. And that's how he caught the, the paper airplane I threw. I didn't have much contact with the boys, so I thought they are all dumb, rough, and perverted, but he seems different. And he seems nice, and he doesn't seem to flinch or look at my legs weird. And Hat let out a puzzle quack. He had been playing in the grass and suddenly looked up at the sky, catching my attention, I look up as well. So this is where 
they see the glider. So there's something floating in the air. It's crossing the lake and gradually getting closer. Wait, so an airplane? So he stops his repairs and look up at the sky too. It steadily crosses the skies with its great white wings. That distinct silhouette looks just like the gliders that I've seen in books. Oh, so it's flying ever so slowly. Well, there's no engines, so there's nothing to power it. So gliders don't have engines, and they're like airplanes with just wings. Well, that's what they are, and they use air currents to stay up in the sky. To fly on the wind like that. It's my first time seeing one fly with my own eyes. Hmm, so why don't we wave at it? Maybe they'll notice. So they try. I raise my voice and wave my hand. I don't know if they would notice, but the wings sparkle in the light of the shining sun. I felt like it is saying hello back. So it was like I found the wings I was yearning for all this time. And that is how I came across gliders and also how I met Aoi Minase, a close friend and an irreplaceable companion. But of course, at that time, I had no idea and that was just the beginning. And later, I ended up joining the soaring club before it was shut down to not only look up at the sky, but also to climb towards it. Okay, so going to the second log, so it is finally our day for our wings to take flight. The preparation for takeoff is going smoothly. I nervously answer Agaha. A whole lot has happened for us to get here. Well, obviously. And this is after when Akari called out Amane for having a club that's wasting money, so not enough members, no progress, and it was where Aoi, Agaha, and Katori tried hard to save the club. Well, Katori did say no at first, but then this is where she found that photograph to the morning glory, and that convinced her to join and fulfill all the requirements for the swimming club to stay afloat. There you go, so I had thought, thought I could fly right away if I joined the soaring club. But I had been naive. The first thing I had done after to join was working on, I'll say, fixing the glider. We had all worked on putting it together. So remember the problem was that when they first hauled the glider, Mai mentioned that it's broken. Um, I tried everything. I looked at the design and for some reason the wings snap during flight. So I don't know what's wrong with it. And then Agha pointed out that, well, it is designed perfectly, but it's built wrong. So the joints are bad and basically the wings are not up to its design strength because of bad joints and mismatched alignment or panels. Basically, Amai is bad with her hands. But thanks to Ayaha 
and Katori being the trainee, they're able to build better wings. So with good joints, good adhesion. Ayo Himegi answers my serious question lightheartedly. Ayoha is Ayo's child friend and someone I have been in a quarrel until recently. And that's because Ayoha was trying to get Katori to come to school. So Katori, she didn't really like Keifu Academy or Science and Engineering and she was trying to, dro to drop out and she often stayed absent. And Ayoha is concerned about Katori as well and she and Ayoha tried their best to get Katori to go to school. And right now we are working on the main wings. The work is done by the club leader Amai Mojizuki have been so terrible that we've taken over production. There you go. And we are using an enhanced plastic called FRPs so fiber reinforced polymers, which Ayoha is very knowledgeable about, and I assisted her while she taught me. There you go. It is difficult doing things I am not used to, but it is still a lot of fun. We are making the very wings that would allow us to fly on our own. Ayoha and I have been awkward at first, but we have become great friends while working together. Enough even to give each other a high five when the main wings are complete. And finally, the long away test flight is upon us. And the glider symbol in front of us is shining in the sunlight. The white wings of gliders are much longer compared to a normal aircraft. Glider wings are meant to fly by catching the wind. So will it fly then? Well, we have to try it out, so test it. It looks fine, but it is hard to imagine the thing you made yourself actually flies. And that's why we have a test flight. But still... So speaking of which, the runway is handmade too. But basically, they just found an open field that could serve as a runway. So normally runways are paved, but this one is just an open field. There you go. We had met up early in the morning to pull out the weeds and grass to make it as smooth as possible. And that was where they had Masasugu and Kanako help out. And I'm not sure if Hotar joined in. A lot of work is put into making the best flight possible, or this test flight possible. And finally, we are preparing for takeoff now that pre-flight checklists are done. And the winch. So I'm in charge of the winch, so Katori. The winch is a machine that quickly winds a really long cable that is connected to the glider at the other end. And really in the cable would launch the glider like a kite. It is hard to imagine, but that is how it is done. And now we have a nice CG of Katori operating the winch. And once I'm in position, I recap how to use the winch until the final preparations are complete. Amane is piloting. Amane is the only one who had a piloting license that time, but I was actually better on the simulator. Our glider is a two-seater, so I is riding with Amane. Agaha sent the signal to initiate takeoff. I pulled the lever and operate the winch. 
the wind starts to wind up the cable making a massive noise. And pulling along by the cable, the glider starts to get closer. I can see the glider beginning to lift. And as I back off the power from the winch, I shout out. And the animation of the glider taking off. The glider rapidly gains altitude as if responding to what I said and went, let's see, sailing overhead. The glider detached the cable and calmly floated in the sky. I stared up in awe. So, it is flying. It is such a strange feeling as if I am being shown magic. And from down below, the glider seems so weightless, it looks like a feather riding the wind. <laughs> Iohub murmurs happily. But it is more than just emotional for me, it felt more like several different feelings are mixed together inside my chest. Well, to be honest, even I thought I'm going to cry myself, but I didn't at the end. Actually, I felt even more excited. I am bubbly with desire to fly even more now. Like the blood pumping in my veins is getting hotter. Like I could sit still and mutter under my breath. In contrast to how I felt, the glider is flying gently and calmly. Or so I thought. The glider is leaning left and right. Something is obviously not right. Wait, so wings? And I contacted them on the radio. So, wait, you're shaking. So you're unsteady. What's wrong? Or it might be because Amane is now in fear of heights and she's shaking because of her fear. Well, Amane, calm down. I don't know what is happening, but there seems to be some confusion in the cockpit. Okay, Amani, so I'm I'm taking over the, the controls. So you're too afraid because of your acrophobia. And some time passes after Iowa takes control, the airframe starts to settle. <sighs> the glider I see steadied, crossed the lake, and headed to the wind turbines in the opposite shore. The glider is taking the same course as the one that Iowa and I had seen when we first met. And I found out later that it had been Amani flying the glider that day. I whisper as I watch the airframe fly away. Looking down at the windmill must have been such a great view. It is the dream that I had since the day I joined the soaring club and started working on the glider. I want to fly with my own wings. My dream seemed within reach. I could make my dream a reality if I put effort into it. Kotori-chan, you're 
見て燃えないなんてありえないでしょ<笑>まあね私は飛ぶより飛ばせたい派だけど We might have different thoughts, but we are all excited about those wings flying across the lake. And the first test fight ended without any major trouble, well, aside from the winch malfunctioning and stopping halfway through. And our glider flew really, so our glider had flown perfectly. But that is not the end. This is just the beginning, the first step towards our dreams. The sky we are aiming for is much more vast. It is daybreak. Okay, so if I remember correctly, what happened was that after Amane and Aoi flew, Katori wanted a ride as well, and they were going to have a second flight for Katori, but then the winch broke down, and Tatsuya would need a few days to fix it, and sadly that meant that Katori couldn't fly at all. So, also during the test flight, Aoi found that the ailerons were too sensitive and They had to adjust the pedals so that it would be easier to control the airplane and not make it wobbly. So, anyways, so this takes place around the fake morning glory, so the morning, and that's why it's daybreak. And in this version, the Moon Lava version, they skipped a part, so there was a log where. Katori, Agiha, and Mari were talking in the bathtub, and I forgot what it was. And Katori really admired Amani for wow, so she looks full chested, she looks like a real woman compared to me who looks like a little child. And the reason it was cut was because obviously they're naked in the bath. So, anyways, let's see how this goes. So, the fake morning glory. So, the dark blue sky to the west slowly graduates into a shimmering orange sky to the east. And a single long cloud is floating there. The morning glory, a long and straight cloud as if it were a dream with a brush. Oh, so if it was drawn with a brush. Okay. A glider flying towards the strange cloud. Formation. I prayed desperately so that Amane could achieve her dream of going to the morning glory. The morning glory cloud formation, a weather phenomenon that occurs once every few decades in Kazagura. A giant road of cloud have formed across the lake, splitting it into. Going across that cloud is the goal of the Soaring Club president at that time, Amane Mojizuki. Amane had made that promise to a friend, and so she had worked hard for it, even going. As far as becoming a repeater. But this is her last summer. Amane would have to leave the club in just a few days because she is forced to graduate. We had all worked hard in the summer to make her dream come true. Morning glory clouds appear early at daybreak. And to avoid missing it, we have to wake up before dawn to go looking for that cloud. We had all stayed the night together at the Flying Fish Manor. Hey, Amane-chan? 
Oh, so the bath scene was not cut out. So, obviously, because this is the Moinov version, they have towels covered over them. Versus the Poltop original version, Japanese version. The night before, I asked Amane while taking a bath. My voice sounds anxious because of the answer I expected. So, if you remember, Amai's father is a chemist, so the lab is obviously a chemical lab, and Amane has to help out. But you know, I want to retire. Amai's unconcerned laughter fills the bath. Amane is a straight person. She's not cold, but she is very drawn or down to earth. I think that's what I really like about her. But, oh, so not that I admit it to her, but I got sad and tearful just thinking about her leaving the club. The first time I met Amane, she had been explained how to fly. She had been explaining the principles of the glider flight, but her eyes had been so clear and full of confidence. So that was where Kotori was asking Amane, so what's under this black cloth? And when Amane pulled off the black cloth, it is a glider still in construction. I felt like I could see an endless blue sky in those eyes. But when she had joined the Soaring Club, she had been terribly unreliable and is bad at glider work. There you go. Well, I guess I wasn't meant for this in the first place. And that is her favorite phrase and somehow she is proud of saying it. But I'm happy to be able to, let's see, aim for the skies with her. I have become obsessed with gliders too. I had been shocked when I found out that she is going to leave the club this summer. Well, it wasn't her decision. I'm sure the faculty members plus Toriyo Sensei forced Amani to accept graduation. It's like, well, you've been here for too long and we can't support you anymore. So either you graduate or we expel you. I want to give me to the, the good times we had and fly her to the skies to the morning glory. <laughs> Am I murmurs going shoulder deep into the bath? I felt the same. There have been a lot of good memories and times. Aga usually joins us in the bath since we have started lodging together, but she is not here today. Oh, so it's not the same bath event that we saw in the common route. And that was where they were talking about romance and, hmm, I wonder who's fit for Aoi. And thankfully, Aoi didn't hear the words, he just heard murmurs and splashing water sounds. Agaha had looked... Oh, so she had lookout duty, so she gone to bed early, and of course, Aoi is a boy, so he is not with us. Mm. 
Oh, so if I remember during that bath event, Aguha was talking about her relationship with Aoi, so the fact that they are child friends, and I think a little bit about the proposal and Aguha rejecting it. But then again, they were kids, so. She says it She says it like it's obvious. She is usually the happy go lucky, so it troubles me when she says something so insightful. I agree with her, but I'm still not sure how I felt about this. If Amane and everyone lived in the Flying Fish Manor, then maybe I would be fine with this forever. Part of me felt that way. But there is another part of me that felt different. That's true. And there she goes again, I thought. I look at her and realize this is just like her. I decide not to hesitate, not to think, to live how uh, so as how I felt. I am the type to worry and hesitate, so it is very reassuring to have Amani by my side. I hesitate for a second and put my wish into words. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, so going past the bath event, now is the real event. So the sun is rising in the sky, a thin corridor of clouds stretch out above. Up in the sky, a single glider is soaring through the air. So go for it, Aoi and Amane. Aguha and I watch from the ground. The first and last summer I could spend with Amane is hinged on this point, the morning glory. The glider ascended as a circle in the updraft, it can no longer be seen with the naked eye. So just a little more. The wings that we had all made carried our hopes all the way to the edge of the sky. To achieve a dream, holding that thought. I looked up to the sun-filled sky. And in the end, we didn't make it. We had been so close. I could not believe it. But at the same time, I understand that is not impossible. Summer had ended and Amari Mizuki left the club. She left us with a big dream. Then summer vacation ended and we started the second semester. And with an abrupt notice, our club was shut down by Tabuyuki Sensei and it was devastating. So once Amai left, the club didn't have enough members and Tabuyuki Sensei used it as a reason to shut the sorting club down. And to make sure it stays shut down, he demolishes the garage that housed the glider. But that didn't seem, oh, so that didn't mean it is 
the end. So this is a modest blueprint, the one she said she finished yesterday. So the famous picture of where Amari has been on the blueprint for days or even weeks. So Amari is always drawing blueprints, the dream glider that is supposed to be built with her best friend. And oh, so I always had them. Or basically, he snuck into the demolition site and he grabbed the blueprints before the foreman was able to destroy it. So we can't end like this. We'll definitely fly our glider. I wave away my tears and nod. A smile returns to Aga's face. And same with Katori. So summer may have ended, but the dream is still strong. So we will fly for sure. And that is the end of the diary for Katori. So that takes us to the end of the first part of the common route and right to the beginning of the second part for the common route. So first they had to resurrect or rebuild the soaring club and that was where Akari gave Aoi, Agaha and Katori four conditions which they had to meet. So obviously Katori did have a dream from the very beginning and she didn't realize that until here at Flight Diary that, oh, so I love the sky, I want to go for it. And that's probably why Katori was willing to push her wheelchair all the way to the top of Windmill Hill. Even though it did put a lot of strain and damage to her wheelchair. So now that her diary is over, I can give my take about Katori in general with this whole If Our Heart Had Wings trilogy. So Katori is a big character and probably the main girl in this whole story. So she had a very big influence from the very beginning in the common route. So with the wheelchair and Aoi fixing it and both of them seeing the glider. And we got to see a lot of Katori, especially when Katori was the one who saved the soaring club the first time around. So she found the photo for the morning glory and going to Katori's route and that was actually the longest route in the original story because I actually went to her family so Hibari and Takayo the father and they were not happy with Katori finding the glider because it kind of reminds me about how Katori lost her ability to walk but that didn't stop Katori so in a sense we can see the determination that Katori is willing to put forward to make things happen. So I want to fly, I won't let my disability in the legs stop me, and I won't let the accident stop me either, or neither the short, the soaring club being shut down by Tiryoka Sensei. And for Katori exclusive, she's the only one that has an extra special disc just for her where we get to see Katori's rehabilitation. So once Katori got her ability to walk again thanks to a surgeon in the Americas and despite it having a low chance, Katori was willing to risk it and she now can walk again and she was practicing walking and even though I would mention that you know you're pushing it too hard you got to take it slowly because you got to get your legs used to being able to hold your weight up. Katori was like, well, I want to be able to walk normally by the time we go home for New Year's Day. And we finally come to the end where... So the after route is actually the longest route in the Flight Diary fan disc. So lots of Katori. And I know it's kind of sad because it would have been better if Poltop put 
some emphasis on the other characters as well. So Maya does get a lot of attention because she's kind of like the, the behind the scenes person for the story, but Agaha and the twins, so Asa Yoro, don't really get much attention. So anyways, now that I'm done with all the Katori roots for all of Ever High Wings, we'll see how it goes for the other roots in Flight Diary in my 8th set of Let's Play videos. So I'm still at the beginning, and there's more to come, and with that in mind, I'll see you in a future playthrough on a future game.